Now let's talk about labour pain because I wonder whether human females have evolved in a funny way to be able not to be able to give mostly to give birth. I mean, painless birth is mm. d- does just about doesn't exist, does it? Not now. Yeah, I mean, it's a great uh, philosophical thing, labour pain, because in some ways it 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 doesn't make sense, because in in across the board, pain is something that serves to stop us doing what we're doing and alerts us to danger yeah and if it worked in labor pain we'd stop labor which Mm. would be disastrous but i mean across cultures there's a really different experience that women have during labor and even within cultures you know some there'll be people listening who would say no well my labor didn't hurt and there are others who wouldn't go back because it was so horrible Uh, but there are there was a, a, a group of villages in south america uh, for whom the men got labour pain and the women didn't. Uh, and that's that's a great example of the power of culture in, in telling the brain how dangerous is this really. Well, for that community, you know, the nine months pregnant and your husband comes down with severe abdominal pains mm. and you walk around looking after him and then eight hours later... You slip into a special room and come out with a baby. The other, the other area where it puzzles me is that some cancers can be painless. They're just symptomless and painless, and yeah. yet they can be deadly. Which is probably why they're deadly. I, I mean, I'm no cancer person, but the danger receptors that we have in our tissues respond to a change. So if that change is really, really slow, they don't respond. So you never, your brain's never alerted to the danger until you have quite a a constriction issue or a blood flow loss issue, something like that, when often it's too late or sometimes it's too late. Mm. I think that might be why cancer is so effective uh, at basically getting under the radar. At promoting itself at the expense of the host. Yeah, because it's it's slow enough to not set off the danger bells. What contributes to people's brains perceiving danger what 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 yeah. what um emphasizes it i'm just wondering whether fear presumably p- yeah. plays into this does uh, it yeah well certainly beliefs that something is dangerous which might make you frightened of it the meaning of the pain is really important the the most obvious thing is it the still doesn't explain input. labor because the meaning of the pain is i'm having a baby which yeah. is what, what i've been looking forward to for nine months yeah but also for the last nine months or, f- or for your entire life you've been surrounded by people saying how bad labor is which is not irrelevant yeah. um but it's complex i guess we could turn that question upside down and say what doesn't contribute uh and probably almost nothing i mean a- anything that that could be relevant to the evaluation of danger uh, you know, Aunt Martha slipped over at work and she's in a wheelchair. That's relevant when you get a danger message coming from your back having mm. slipped over. What isn't re- relevant, according to your book, is the amount of tissue damage. Yeah, well, it's relevant, yeah, but it's not the critical determinant. So yeah. even from experiments in animals who don't have the sophistication that our brains have shows quite clearly that the, the, the way they behave, which reflects presumably their pain, does not relate one to one with the, the injury that is inflicted upon mm. them. So the, what, the 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 paper cut, which can ouch, be mm. really really stingingly painful, mm. can't it? Yeah, it can. Why does it hurt so? Much? I don't know. It doesn't the present a cut, danger, does it? No, the paper cut thing really gets me, because I I don't quite understand why it can hurt so much. There, there is a study that shows that if it's acid free paper, it doesn't hurt as much. Oh, really? Yeah, but. It's, it's more complex than that. And the easy thing for someone like me is that in questions like this, I'm able to say, Margaret... I don't know. I don't know, but we are indeed fearfully and wonderfully complex. The, and the interesting thing is that paper is not perceived as a dangerous thing. It's per- per- perceived as a benign thing, and mm. yet it can give you that nip, can't it? Mm. What's modern pain management about? What does it focus on? Uh, well, pain management is focusing really on giving people the resources to, to have a life despite their pain. So cognitive behavioural principles and that stuff's been around for a while, teaching people how to plan their day better, how to interpret their symptoms better. The emerging stuff with with pain treatment, uh, there's always drug angles, so there's mm. a lot of heaps of money going into finding 
better drugs. There's Still also, not coming up. I could interp- in, in, interpolate here from, from observing this myself that uh, somebody I know who had orthopaedic surgery, I brought it up because I was talking, talking to this mm. friend of mine not just recently, and they were talking about having patient administered morphine yep. post-operatively in the first six hours or something yep. and they were shown that if they you know they pressed the button it would deliver a little dose of morphine yep. and apparently studies show that people once they've got control over it people deliver themselves much less morphine than they would if they were much just less. asking for them from the nurse yeah much less and and we and there's experiments we did experiments at oxford that show that if you're in control your brain doesn't try as hard to protect you which is really intuitively sensible, isn't it? Well, how can you be in tr- control of your chronic back? Well, you can be once you, you understand why your back hurts. And I guess it, the second half to that second half of the answer to, to your question, Margaret, was yeah, when we're trying to treat it, we we really I think have to identify all the reasons that your brain thinks your back is in danger, and then we start exposing people to the threat in a really small way but not enough to set off their pain. And then we slowly, gradually train mm. back into that. And um, then so you get control. Once you have understanding, then you're more likely to take control. There's the whole issue of phantom limbs, which we haven't discussed properly. Mm. People have pain in phantom limbs. Yeah, it doesn't exist. The, the limb doesn't even exist. And Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah, I do a lot of work. Well, I, I do a, an amount of work with people with phantom limb pain. Um, it actually hurts. Absolutely hurts. They're exactly actually the same suffering from they, pain as if they had that leg. Exactly the same, indistinguishable, except that they've got no leg or no no arm, if you like. Uh, or they might have a, an injury to the nerves that supply it, so um, an injury where you rip all the nerves that supply your arm out of your spinal cord. You've got the arm, but it's not supplied with nerves, and it's excruciatingly painful. We have not also touched on emotional pain. Does that excite the same areas of the brain as physical pain? Uh, well, this this is a cab sav issue, Margaret, which is the issue you should only discuss over a bottle of South Australian Cabernet Sauvignon. Oh, okay. Can and we, we don't have one here. So, um, <laughs> no, I, well, I mean, I would argue that there's no distinction to be made between emotional and physical pain. If you feel it somewhere in your body, it's pain. Uh, it may not be related to a message coming from that body part. It might be related to other things, but I think that distinction is not helpful. However, there are people who disagree with me who have done experiments that show that what I would describe as uh, anguish uh, or social exclusion activates similar brain areas on average to those, those things. Wow. Gosh, it's, it's all about full protection. Of, full of interesting stuff, that. 